Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong and welcome to the back office. I want to show you this today. It's five kilos of a moulding compound. So you know in previous videos I've used room temperature, vulcanising, silicone type stuff like this to make moulds and you get the little shape in there and you make your little things. And I've done quite a few of those over the uh, last few months. That's a really huge mold for a very small thing don't do it that way very expensive so you can see that it can get expensive because not everything works out so when you're making your mold stuff cocks up and you, you need to make new molds and get things just right and uh, that's a mold of a gear that works pretty well actually um but it's it not only is it kind of expensive it doesn't really there's no real purchase point where it gets cheaper by the way either not in the uk um, but it takes at least 24 hours to cure and that's really annoying. So this is a different stuff and I've already sort of cut a chunk of it. This is a whole bag of it, it's five kilos. It's surprisingly uh, big. It's got the same uh, specific gravity as water. So a uh, kilo of it will be a litre. And it, it smells it smells quite pleasant, slightly plasticky. It's slightly slightly oily texture, but it's very similar to silicone if, if, if anything I would say this is kind of like dead flesh this is you could make a, a person out of this and uh, you can see there if you look in the end it's just like a massive massive container of it and what you do to use it you cut it up you cut it up into lots of little chunks and I'll show you what that looks like because here's a container I kind of used earlier so what you do this is this is old stuff right so what I did is I put some in here um, and you can see you can just cut it with a normal knife a bit like jelly if you remember when you buy jelly in a block it's exactly like that in almost every respect and it's kind of trying to stick in there but look, I'll just get in there with my fingers so that's what it looks like doesn't kind of want to stick together because it's cut now um, but yeah so you, you get a container and if you look at the instructions it, it shows you how to do it over a, a pot and it's a bit like mixing custard you mix it mix it very same consistency once it's liquid you pour it into a normal mold um, so it, it's ready to go pretty quickly and it doesn't take that 24 hours to cure which is great and you can see it's, it's very kind of malleable it's it's almost RTV like but I don't think RTV you can quite tear in the same way. This one's a little bit bitty. It's a bit bitty. Uh, and you can reuse it. And that's the whole benefit of it is that you can reuse it over and over and over again. So not only is it quicker to work with, it costs, I think, I think it's similar price to um, silicone. In fact, if anything, it's a bit cheaper. Um, you can reuse it. It operates on heat and it's quick setting. So all in all, it's definitely a, a good good uh, alternative so here's some uh, a silicone mold I made earlier and that's a of a gear and you can see in there there's some geary type teeth and that one didn't work out for me so well it's okay the molds not so bad but it was prone to sort of getting air bubbles and things I wanted to try try something else so what I did is I took the same object you can see it's it's kind of resting there on that screw and I've put it in here, but I've, I've kind of put it in an angle. It's not ideal. But just to show you, this was in a measuring cup. Um, and you can see, if you look closely, you do get some of the detail. You do get some quite fine detail there. And they do the uh, Vina mold in several grades, you know, depending on how firm you want. And you can see here, this is the bit which I heated nice and gradually in the microwave at 150 watts over five minutes and this is when I accidentally left the microwave on 750 watts and it really scorched that I'll uh, be very careful in the microwave I'm not sure how long it's going to last if you're overcooking it in fact if it's making any sort of smoke or fumes you're probably running it too hot no matter how you're, you're heating it so be cautious at that so I want to extract this and I want to see if it kind of extracts easier or, or harder than a, a regular um, mold. I have my um, knife here and I'll just show you this is the sort of regular regular mold and if I was going to cut a bit with it it's quite firm and it's definitely not something you want to do a lot of so I'm going to try that on this and I'm going to go around this screw hole so I'm going to cut straight down this way yeah that's nice I think it's easier if anything I think that's easier to do I can feel the object there we go
Oh, I was really jamming in, jamming into my object there. I'm sure, it appreciates that. Whoa, and that's it. I'm right round. That kind of kind of caught up on me a bit quicker than I expected. So you can do all sorts of um, use all sorts of moulding techniques with this. They they do seem to sort of recommend all the different kinds. But I'm looking at because of it's got this slight brittleness. You might have to be a bit careful when you're separating your mould, at least for the first time. Okay, I think I've got I think I've got it. Let's just gently, gently. Now some people say you should just be a bit more aggressive with the old knife. So you get better registration, but So I didn't do a great job there. So there's my object uh, and I've cut it in such a way that's going to make it impossible to pour really. Um, but let's see if I can get it out. It's still, There's a still a possibility it'll come out in one piece. But it's a good test really of our mould material here. I think this would be really good for stuff that's flattish, you know, like you're making a box for. See if we can get our gear out. I'm seeing quite a lot of material sticking to the object itself. No! Yeah. That's the problem right there. So I might need to sort of use a release agent. And that, that's probably the main difference, I guess, between this and silicone. You've got to be a bit more cautious. So I'm going to read up on release agents, you see there, because that is going to be a problem. However, you know, this is, let's say I've done that now and I'm not happy with that, cocked it up. Now, if this was a regular silicone mold, then that's in the bin. You sort of throw that away. But now I don't have to. So let's just, this is how you'd recycle it. So you're literally just cutting it into pieces probably smaller the better it's up to you and try to do it on something clean because remember any bits and bobs in there are going to be included in your your mold so it's probably good if you want to uh, save sort of fresh vinyl mold for uh, things like what I'm doing now where it's fine work and then you can save old vinyl mold for stuff like you know your Warhammer walls that you're building I'm saying vinyl I'm sure it's vinyl I'm sure this is a vinyl I'm not I have no idea yeah, look at that. So that's good, isn't it? It's all good in the hood. Put it all back in the pot for later. So yeah, look out for some of that. Um, I got it, I think, pretty much on eBay. It's uh, just as cheap when you're working out PMP to buy it from a vendor on eBay as it is buying it from a local shop. And uh, let me know your Vina moulding experience. As ever, thanks for watching.